Uh, this quick video is on malloc, just to show you what malloc does. Um, you will recall what we've done up to now is we've used pointers with variables. So we would have said integer n, um, make it equal to 5, and then we would have said, okay, I want to access this n through a pointer. So I'm going to make an integer pointer, and this integer pointer I will call pn, and I will make it point to n. Right? That's what we've done up to now. What we do with malloc is we say instead of instead of creating this variable, we're just going to use a pointer and tell the computer to give us memory. Because what you know from hopefully from experience is this creates four bytes in memory where n is stored and it has a name. This has four bytes in memory because we're storing an address which is also four bytes long. We're storing an address in memory. What we're going to do now is we're just going to say, let's make this pointer and tell the computer to give us four bytes, which we will use to store a number, but we don't have a name to access that memory. So we're going to change this approach slightly and throw away the n. The way we do that is we make a pointer. So just forget about that for a second. Int pn is equal to, so this is a pointer to an integer type, the name of the pointer is pn, and then we use a function called malloc. Malloc is short for memory allocate. Allocate just means get, find, find and use. And the malloc function takes in as an argument how many bytes you require it to find. So the malloc goes and finds memory for you and finds, allocates space for you in memory. You tell it how many bytes you want. So let's say this pointer of ours, we want it to point to an integer type. So that's just four bytes. You can either say malloc4, or you can just say malloc size of. Remember the size of function tells you how many bytes something is. So size of int. This says find the size of integer. It's four bytes. Go to memory, find four bytes, and then this malloc function returns with the address where it found that four bytes. So that four bytes worth of memory, wherever it resides, that address will be put into pn. So what you can then do is you can say pn dereference it. So go to that memory that we found and give it a value 5. What you can also then do, um, oh sorry, what I want to say now. What you can also obviously do is you can make um, bigger bigger variables here. You can put structures inside this. The big difference is just we don't have the name of the variable. We don't have a name for this memory anymore. We now have memory, and the only way we can access it is through this pointer, which is important for two reasons. If you change the pointer inadvertently, you, you lose a handle on that memory. So there's memory, a block of memory somewhere. In this case, it's four bytes. You have a pointer, and the only way you can get access to this block of memory is through the pointer that points there. If you change this value inadvertently or otherwise, you can't access that memory anymore. You don't have a handle on it. You don't know where it was stored. So the implication of that is two things, twofold. You need to keep a handle of it to still access it. But also, if you throw away the handle to it, you have what we call a memory leak. That means memory can go lost. So before we terminate the program, we need to free that memory. We need to tell the computer, I don't need that memory that we allocated anymore. And the way we do that is we use the free function. And the free function just expects you to give that address to it. So we say free whatever pn is pointing to. So take pn's value, go to that address, and free the memory so that we don't have a memory leak. So before you let the handle go, Use the handle to free the memory, otherwise that memory is just going to hang around until you reset the computer.